Good morning. And welcome to worship here at the First Presbyterian Church of Woodbridge. We are so glad that you are worshiping with us this morning on this Mother's Day. There are a couple of things I would like to remind you about. The first is the, um, all of the announcements that are in your bulletin. Please take a look at that. Also, um, a reminder that PW meets tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. in the lounge and in two Sundays, so not next Sunday, but the Sunday after, which is the 28th. Thank you, I was trying to do math in, in my head, which is never good. Um, on the 28th, is Pente not only is it Memorial Day weekend, but it is also Pentecost Sunday, so please wear red in honor of Pentecost. Are there any other announcements that need to come before us at this time? Seeing none, then let us begin our worship with our prelude. Good morning. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. How shall we love our God who has poured out such love upon us? We shall love God with all our hearts, minds, soul, and spirit. How shall we demonstrate that love? We shall live that love in all that we do, think, and say. Let our love be genuine and holy. Let us pray. Source of all creation, maker of the world and everything in it, you are never far from each one of us. We come into your house seeking you, O giver of life and breath. Reveal yourself to us, dwell with us, and abide in us. We live because of you. We hope because of you. In the name of Jesus Christ in whom we live and the spirit of truth who abides in us, amen. Please rise as you are able and join in our opening hymn, number 12, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise.
Dear friends, our God calls us to life, life that is abundant and full. And sometimes we choose to live life that is small and afraid. Together, let us pray our prayer of confession. Lord of mercy, there are so many times in our lives when we feel alone. We wonder where we are when you do not immediately grant the prayers of our cries we begin to doubt that you even care. Stop us from going down this path of self-doubt. Help us find the many ways in which you have blessed our lives. Forgive us when we are so quick to doubt and so arrogant in our demands of your responses. Give us a spirit of patience and willingness to be ready to hear your voice. Strengthen us for the ministries of love and hope that you have placed before us. For we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Dear friends, even in the midst of doubt and darkness, the light of God is shining in you, on you, and through you. Out of God's great love, you have been forgiven, redeemed, and made whole. Thanks be to God. Okay. Any children want to come down? I'm so glad we have kids that was, we were tentative. Wasn't sure if we were going to have any. Hi. Hi. Come on, Truth. Okay. Ready? Okay. Having a lollipop. Oh, look, it even matches your dress. How pretty. How fashionable. Okay. So, today is what day? Mother's Day. And you all gave mommy a big hug and kiss today, right? And said, Happy Mother's Day. And you're promising that you're going to be really good today and give mommy a nice break, right? All right, good. Well, before we start, I have to say that when I was asked if I wanted to do a children's chat, I said yes. And then I went, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I went online, and I found this really good Mother's Day. It was, it's by the Reverend De, uh, De, Danielle Detmer. Okay? Did you know that when you take away something, you get more back? Does that make sense? Right? Don't do this at math. Okay? How many corners do we have? One, two, three, four. I have more, didn't I? Would you like to hold my corner here? Okay. Ready? We have more. Now we have six. Now we have seven. Look at that. I'm giving things away and I'm getting more. And now we have eight. All right. Right. If we kept going, right, I keep giving away and I get more and more. 
And then you know what I end up with? Tell me what I end up with. Eventually, when I take away all the corners, Mr. Kelvin, what do I get? I get a circle. Yeah, you don't believe me, do you? OK, good. So as we give it away, right, it becomes a circle. And what are we giving away? We're giving away love. So when you give love, guess what? You get more love back. And when you give love, you get more back. Right? And why am I talking about love today? Because on Mother's Day, it's a special kind of love, isn't it? Your mommies love you like nobody else does, not even grandma. Not even grandma, right? They actually love. Yes, everyone loves, right? But mommy's love is special. But you know what? There's a whole bunch of people that also love you. You want to stand up and let me introduce you. Stand up. Stand up. OK, you turn around. Alice, stand up. Thanks. Turn around. Turn around. Do you see all the ladies out here? Guess what? They're your church mommies. <laughs> Every single person here is going to give you love and want the best for you. So look at all the love you're receiving. Look how much you are getting. And guess what? Just like this circle, love is always happening. Because there's no corners here. There's no start. There's no stopping. So when you give love, you get back love. And every lady here is sending you their church love so that you can be who you are. And I know that at the end of the service, what are you going to do? Are you giving away flowers? Yeah, you're going to give a flower to each one of your church moms here, right? They give their love back, OK? Let's have a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, let us always remember that we are loved by our church moms and our mom and every lady that's in our life. Because love never stops. It continues on, and we get more and more the more we give away. Thank you. Have a nice Mother's Day and be nice to mommy. Let us pray. Holy God, in you we live and move and have our being. May your words inspire us <clears throat> to live out this profound truth, mindful of the beauty, the hope, and the calling of living in you. Amen. The first lesson this morning is Acts chapter 17, verses 22 through 31. Then Paul stood in front of the Arapachus and said, Arthenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, to an unknown God, what therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the place where they would live so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him. Though indeed he is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, 
an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The second lesson is from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it, is neither, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be with you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live in you. You also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. May God add a blessing of the reading and the hearing of God's holy words. I have always loved this passage from the Acts of the Apostles. When I was younger, I pictured Paul finding this altar and immediately and confidently knowing what he would say to anyone who was around who would listen. I had the idealistic vision of youth along with newfound knowledge that allowed me to be very self-assured in what I knew and how well I believed I constructed an argument. So I projected all of that onto Paul. Now, let's just say that life has tempered these visions that I used to have of myself. And I still love this passage. Yet I view Paul now in this passage in a very different light. I now see him as someone who had to do something extremely hard in front of an intimidating crowd. Because remember, Paul was preaching in Athens. He was preaching to a very learned crowd. The Athenians were people well-versed in theology and philosophy. They could craft out well-thought-out arguments. They debated ideas all the time. Paul knows this, and Paul handled these challenges and demonstrated that he had enough knowledge and wisdom to speak theology in a place like this. Paul also knew that he needed to do three things so that the Athenians would take the religion and the God of which Paul was preaching seriously. And those, thing, those three things were, one, the sponsor of the new religion must claim to represent a deity. Two, the sponsor of, the, of this new deity must provide evidence that this deity 
is eager to live in Athens. And three, the deity's residence in Athens must benefit Athenians as a mark of goodwill. This was the criteria that Paul needed to, to meet just to have his words listened to. And Paul starts his argument with these words from the passage Lynn just read. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. Paul is using the structure that the Athenians are, are requiring so that they can start to debate him. And at the same time, Paul is saying that God is much more than all of these constructs. Paul speaks to how God does not live in any one place on earth, but is everywhere all the time. He speaks of God's love and care for this world and everyone in it. Paul then, using this logic, invites the Athenians to convert to following this God. This passage also invites us to recommit to God and to live in God's love. Because when we are honest with ourselves, we know that we too can get lost in thoughts and arguments. We can hear others talk of different ways to worship, live, and think about God. And hearing their voices make us doubt ourselves and our faith. When that happens, we need to remember Paul at this moment. He faced an intimidating and skeptical crowd, yet he knew that, Paul, that God would, would support him in his insecurity. We need to remember that God does the same thing to us, that, that our God loves us so deeply that God will always be with us, reassuring us that we are enough for whatever situation we find ourselves in. God gives us what we need to face all aspects of life. And yet we still need to remember that life and the situations that we can find ourselves in can produce doubt and insecurity. It's a given. We all hit those points. There will always be times when we, in, when we will doubt our abilities, our gifts, and even God, God's self. And yet in those times, God is especially with us guiding us, reminding us of divine love, hope, and promise. I am reminded of Carol Joyce Carty's poem, Footprints in the Sand, an oldie but a goodie. One night, a man had a dream. He dreamed he was walking along the beach with the Lord. Across the sky, flashed scenes from his life. For each scene, he noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to him and the other to the Lord. When the last scene of his life flashed before him, he looked back at the footprints in the sand. He noticed that many times along the path of his life, there was only one set of footprints. 
he also noticed that it happened at the very lowest and saddest times in his life. This really bothered the man, and he questioned the Lord about it. Lord, you said that once I decided to follow you, you would walk with me all the way. But I have noticed that during the most troublesome times in my life, there is only one set of footprints. I don't understand why when I needed you most, you would leave me. The Lord replied, my precious child, I love you and I would never leave you. During your times of trial and suffering, when you see only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. This poem reminds us that God never lets us go. Once we let God into our hearts, God is always with us forever. The passage from John's Gospel reminds us, that God, reminds us of God's never-ending presence with us as well. For those of us who claim the name of Christian, we know that his presence is with us forever. We know that God's abiding presence is always near. For the community that was first reading this gospel, this is an important fact. They were the new kids on the block, so to speak, following a religion that nobody really knew too much about. There was persecution, there were doubts, there were hardships, and they needed to know always that God was always near. Even after Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension, they needed to know that there would be an advocate or the Holy Spirit for them. Always. And we know that as well. The advocate that John uses for the Holy Spirit reminds us that there is a mutuality of love among God, Jesus, and faithful followers that will never be broken. We will be reminded once again of this presence when we celebrate Pentecost in two weeks and remember to wear red. This Sunday, when we celebrate Mother's Day, we are reminded of how God cares for each and every one of us and all of creation. Like a loving and caring mother, God's love is always available to us. God searches us out when we are lost. God challenges us and inspires us to live up to the divine image of us. Unlike the Athenians, we never really ever have to find God. God has always been with us, leading us, guiding us, loving us and cajoling us to be the grace-filled beings that we are created to be. May we always live God's love in everything we do and everything we are. Amen. I invite those who are able to rise as we affirm our faith, as we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. 
he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our next hymn is number 735, I Need Thee Every Hour. Please be seated. Today is indeed Mother's Day, and so we wish all mothers, grandmothers, aunts, neighbors who act like mothers, teachers who act like mothers, a happy Mother's Day, all of those bonus moms that are out there. And to honor Mother's Day, I would like to share a poem that a friend of mine, the Reverend Kristen Barner, wrote, which I believe 
captures a part of all the different kinds of mothering that happens. A poem in honor of Mother's Day. To the moms who are, the moms who will be, the moms who were, the moms who can't be, the moms who want to be, the moms who didn't want to be but are, the moms who are dads, the moms who are aunts, sisters, or grandmothers, the moms who have human babies, the moms who have furry babies, feathered ba babies, scaly or swimmy babies, the moms who tried so hard and paid tons of money to be. The moms who tried so hard and paid tons of money and still are not yet. The moms who travel to airports, foreign lands, agencies, and attorneys to be. The moms who are coaches, teachers, trainers, and directors. The moms who are neighbors the moms who are estranged from their children, the moms who are reunited with their children, the moms left out of overpriced Mother's Day brunch, the moms who have to work the overpriced Mother's Day brunch, the moms who make beds in hotel rooms and can't make their kids breakfast, the moms who wait for the taxi, the bus, the ride to get to work. The moms who help with homework. The moms who don't know how to help with homework, especially if it's new math. The moms who wake up their kids from school when they come home from the night shift. The moms who wait home from school from home and welcome their kids. The moms who drop off their kids to school on their way to job number two. The moms who homeschool. The moms who go to school. The moms who create culinary masterpieces out of leftovers. The moms who pray to God they can eke out a little more ketchup for tonight's fish sticks the moms suffering with postpartum depression, the moms radiating from joy and miracle with thankful hearts, the moms who long for a nap, the moms who can't get out of bed, the worried moms, the proud moms, the moms who need to grow up, the moms who have grown old, the moms who never ever wanted children yet care for them so tenderly. The moms who so want children and weep as Rachel wept. The Sarahs, the Hagars, the Leahs, the Rebeccas, the Elizabeths, and the Marys. To all of you. You are thought of on this day. Happy Mothering Day. This poem always gets me because there are so many different ways to mother and there's so many different times in our lives and in many ways we can feel so many of these all at the, t all at the same time and I know dads do too. And on Father's Day, I will give you my father's diatribe of how mothers get everything and dads get ignored. Anyway, we have now come, as I mop myself up, we now have come to the time in our service where I invite you to share your joys, your concerns, your reasons to give thanks. I do have news to share. I can share that Jim DeWitt was in JFK Hospital last week. 
um, for some tests and they weren't sure what was going on. He is now out of JFK and is in Brighton Gardens um, in, a, in a new assisted living. Um, if you go visit, do not go visit around two o'clock, which is lunchtime, because you cannot visit him then, because he has to eat with his table and interact with the table that they create for him. So that's your warning, but he is happily settling in. Are there others? I'll start with Margaret. Yes, thank you, Margaret. We, Margaret asks for prayers for the Adamo family and the extended family who lost a family member unexpectedly yesterday and now they have to tell today the mother about this. So prayers in what is going to be a very hard time. And she's 95, so. Linda. Okay, we'll just continue to cry. Um, we prayed for, for Linda's friend Kim, who lost her life suddenly last week. Her mother was in hospice and her mother passed. So this family is dealing with two significant losses within seven days of each other? Two weeks of each other. So prayers, prayers for that family. If there's something happening that we can help, please let us know too. Are there others? Yes, Jill. Yes, <laughs> yes, we do especially remember on this Mother's Day everyone who lost their moms this year. Um, what? Yes, and reach out to them because it, it is a hard day. Are there, yes, Joanne. Thank you, Joanne. Um, Joanne reports that her husband, Bob, is doing very well and thanks us all for the prayers and asks that we will continue them because on Wednesday he goes to the, to the doctor to get his chemo schedule. So we keep prayers for that. And to continue prayers for Joanne's sister, who they still don't really know what the mass is, um, in her and they're, they're doing more tests, but she has dropped to 889 pounds. So we will continue to pray that they find out what's going on and they can do something for her. Are there others? Then with all that is on our hearts and our minds, 
let us turn to God in prayer, first with the silent prayers of our hearts. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all the ways in which you show your love to us. And we especially thank you that you created mothers and the act of mothering so that we would learn how to live and juggle 24 things at once and learn how to love and care and how to be your faithful people. Remind us each and every day that we are called also to share and show that same love to everyone we meet, and to the entire world. Remind us that when we are afraid, you are always with us. When we don't know what will happen next, you are there guiding us, leading us, reminding us of your love and your care. Holy God, we thank you for all that you are and all that you call us to be. And on this day, we pray. We pray for all the mothers who mother in so many different ways. We ask that they are blessed. We pray for all children of all ages who have learned to negotiate relationships that sometimes are easy and sometimes difficult. We pray for all of those people who grieve and mourn on this day. We ask that they know your peace. We pray for all of those people who celebrate on this day, knowing their celebrations are sweeter with your presence. We pray for all of those people who are ill, in body, mind, or spirit. We ask that your healing presence come upon them and that your guidance be with all who care for them. We pray, Holy God, for all of those people with questions that loom so large and answers that feel so small. We ask that they know your hope. We pray for all of those people who freely give of themselves in so many different ways so that we may lead our blessed lives. We ask that you keep them safe. And always, holy God, we pray that there would be an end to violence and war and hatred, and that your peace and your justice and your mercy come to all corners of our world. Lead us and guide us, holy God, to be your faithful people here and now. We pray this prayer and all prayers in the name of the one you sent for us, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, It is now time for our offering. We are invited to share the hope that sustains us, the love and presence of God that upholds all. From these promises, let us give our gifts today. The ushers may now come forward.
please join me in the prayer of dedication that's printed in your bulletin? God of all creation, you offer us so many blessings for creating us in your image and entrusting us to reveal your presence throughout the world. We thank you. Create blessings, even miracles, through the gifts we now bring, that others may sense your abiding presence and know your extravagant love. In gratitude and hope we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 837, What a Fellowship, What a Joy Divine. Amen. 